What's up everybody? Welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about eight ways to increase your sales on Redbubble. Now something that I got to be clear on is that when you want to increase your sales on Redbubble, I want you guys to look at it like a pizza pie. There's a, there's a reason why I have an image of a pizza pie on here divided into eight slices. If you can kind of get better at each of these eight aspects, then these eight different ways make you 100% better as a, as, a, as a Redbubble seller, and you're going to make more passive income. So we're going to break down what these eight pieces are, and I'm going to specifically explain each and every one of them, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one, guys, is niche research. In fact, the first, first four aspects are all similar. They kind of tie into each other. The first one is niche research. It's different than, um, you know, picking out a design or picking out an idea. You want to figure out what niche are you going to target and why it's going to be good. You have to be able, guys, to convince yourself why that's a good niche. You know, the way I look at this is, is if you had um, like a gun pointed to your head. I know this might be a little aggressive and crazy, but... A lot of people are, are literally performing actions on Redbubble, just working constantly, day by day by day, without really thinking about why they're doing things. If you had a gun pointed at your head, and that person was on the other side, right, asking you, how can you prove to me that this niche is going to be a profitable one, you have to be able to explain yourself. You have to give yourself a bunch of reasons why, okay? If you don't have those specific reasons, it's not a good idea to go to that specific niche, right? And of course, there are tutorials and different guides on how to pick a certain niche for your Redbubble uh, shirts. In fact, I just cr created a video this morning, and it's public, on uh, finding low competition niches or, uh, you know, a niche that's a low competition for Redbubble. So I recommend you go watch that video. I'll actually leave that video in the link in the description box down below so you guys can watch it. It's a free video here on YouTube. And, um... It just shows you how to pick the, you know, how to find a niche that's not as competitive. And the golden thing here, guys, is when you're dealing with Redbubble, is you want to make sure that there's some sort of search demand or search volume for a specific niche, but it has to be lower competition, okay? And when I say lower competition, there, there doesn't have to be no competition. You just have to make sure that you have the ability to stand out. So niche research is one of those aspects. And once again, I use that metaphor. Somebody's pointing a gun to your head. You know, they're going to pull that trigger if you don't have a good explanation, a logical, you know, explanation that you can back by evidence showing that your niche is actually going to be successful. And you have to be confident. You know, the answer could be, you know, very simply put, it could be, you know, I, I've sold in that niche before, I know it works. Or the niche could be something as diff, uh, as advanced as, here's the statistics, here's the analytics, here's my potential conversion rate, etc. So, niche research matters. We gotta take an active approach to these things, guys, and take it a little more seriously, okay? Let's go ahead and continue. Your main focus keyword. So, when I talk about a main focus keyword on Redbubble, what you decide to title your product is what I call the main focus keyword. That's the keyword above all other keywords that you want to rank for for that specific product. Now, I referred to this in the uh, Redbubble course. I told, I've talked about this. You have the Google search algorithm. You have the Redbubble search algorithm. They obviously both follow different rules and for good reason. But if you want to rank okay, for that keyword on either algorithm, what is going to be the main focus keyword? Once again, you have to be able to explain logically to yourself why you're 100% sure that this is the absolute best keyword that you're going to use. Now, each of these eight aspects, guys, it, it, it accounts for 12.5% of your success. You're gonna, the goal here is to get 100% better. Right? If we can get all, if all of us, if all of us can get 100% better at what we're doing in life, that will change the fabric, uh, essentially, of our destiny, of our future, of our life. It will change our income, it will change our behavior, it will change the way we think about things, it will change every single thing, which is why I say repetition is key. Repetition is where you learn. You got to put the reps in, you know, putting those reps in, it's just like being in the gym. The more you do something, you get better at it. Which is why I tell everybody, try as hard as you can to get those 60 designs up per day. Obviously, you're not going to do it for every account. You you know, if you guys are following my uh, kind of uh, strategy of what I'm doing, where I have 10 different accounts for the new year, 
I'm not going to be able to do 60 designs per account because Redbubble has rules on that. But for the new accounts, you know, you might want to do five on each on each platform, 10 on each platform, you know, uh, on each account, I mean. And re like I said, repetition is key. You're going to get better and better at these aspects, finding the keyword, finding the niche when you do it more, you know, over and over and over and over again, right? It's almost like the, uh, you know, wax on, wax off uh, kind of aspect, all right? Let's go ahead and continue. Tag research, tag keyword research. So part of the success behind Redbubble, where people can search for a certain keyword and find you in the Redbubble niche or in the Redbubble search, right, is your keyword tagging. What keywords are you using to tag? What are your explanations behind you know, picking certain keywords for tagging. Something that I'll say is there are a lot of people who are spam tagging. Now, spam tagging is advised against by the Redbubble platform. But for some people who know what they're doing, it works. And there's a reason why. Now, I'm not going out here and recommending that you spam tag because the unfortunate part is majority of people do spam tagging incorrectly. If you want to learn how to tag correctly, I've made a whole course on this. It's actually 50% off right now. Um, and we're adding content to the course like... The other day, we added three new pieces, uh, three new lessons to the course, and the day before that, we added two new pieces. So once you get into the course, guys, there's a members area, you get to access all the new content. But right now, it's half off. Like I said, once I complete the course and I complete all the different lessons in it, we're going to double the price, and it says it down here when I talk about price. So $35.99, if that's something you feel you need help in when it comes down to tagging, go grab the course. The link will be in the description box down below. It's the tagging course. But like I said, tagging is very important. That's why I created a whole course on it, okay? Tagging is the thing that, you know, when people type in certain keywords, like I said, in Redbubble, that's going to be, uh, your, your design is going to show up because of the tag. Now, there's other aspects that essentially include you getting ranked on Redbubble, but essentially when you use certain tags, you're declaring to Redbubble you want to rank for those specific keywords. And a lot of people are just doing it wrong. I'll give you a quick example. If I wanted to rank for, uh, a, let's say I have a design of a rose on a t-shirt, right? That could sell, but the people who are going wrong, they might tag it, for example, with the keyword red, if it's a red rose. See, I wouldn't do that because I know that the keyword red has too much competition. I'm going to be a needle in a haystack, right? The needle in a haystack approach. By the time I get ranked, it could take years to get there. And on top of that, I have to have a sales history to prove it. So I'm going to have to essentially get sales from other keywords. Now, like I said, I have a whole approach on this within the course. So if that's something you struggle with, if you think that tagging is a problem that you have in your business that you want to fix... Maybe the course is for you. All right, let's go ahead and continue here for the next one, which is Google Keyword Competition. I've talked about this once again in the course because we cover not only the Redbubble algorithm, but the Google algorithm. When you want there, and there's a lot of people that do this, but when you want to rank for specifically Google, like you don't care about the Redbubble algorithm, but you care about the Google algorithm and you want to rank specifically for the Google algorithm, you have to take a certain kind of steps in mind to get ranked on Google. Okay, now you could be an SEO and have 10 years of an experience and you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but there's a lot of aspects that determine who gets the number one spot in Google. There's a lot of things. It's not just the keyword that you pick, right? And there's different things that affect that, especially when we're talking about Redbubble. Now, since it's easier for us, since we all are on, all are on, we all are on the same exact platform, which is Redbubble, it gets a little bit easier, but there's still different aspects to learn. So... And like I said, guys, I know people that actually do this where they don't care about ranking on Redbubble. They don't they don't care at all about Redbubble's tags. They don't care about optimizing for the Redbubble search. And the reason why is because they know that the Google algorithm is infinitely larger than the Redbubble algorithm, right? Redbubble is only a fraction of what Google offers. And that's essentially, you know, and I call this, I've said this before, but Google is the godfather of all algorithms, of all search engines, right? And when people choose, at, at least some of the people that I personally know, to get sales through Redbubble, and when I say choose, I say choose, you know, I say that word on purpose because they're actually choosing. They know for a fact what they're doing, and they're going out there, and they're taking certain keywords, and they're utilizing these keywords to get into Google's ranking. 
and they know exactly what they're doing, and they optimize specifically for Google. They don't care about Redbubble. So another part, like I said, of the eight aspects, 12.5% of your success level could come from Google potentially, right? If you improve on this one aspect, how much sales could it generate for you? If you have 600 designs, 900 designs, hell, even 80 designs, if you went back and optimized your listing specifically for Google, how many more sales can you drive? Maybe 10, maybe 20, maybe 100, maybe 300 over the course of the year. So what? It's better than nothing. That's why I say you get better at one aspect at a time. You're going to have results over time adding up and getting 100% better. Okay. Design quality. Look, I've talked about design quality before. Your design doesn't have to be amazing, but it has to be decent enough for somebody to buy. I think we can all agree on that. I think nobody here can disagree, right? If the design is good enough, it will generate sales, assuming that it's seen, of course, which, of course, your design has to be seen, you know, that that essentially plays off of the first four aspects, right? But your design quality, if your design is terrible and it's seen by millions of people, you're going to have a hard time getting sales, But if your design is decent and it's seen by fewer people, well, that has to do with your conversion rate. That's part of your conversion rate. But your design quality kind of controls, you know, how many people have a true desire for your product. The best way I can explain this is there's a product that I have in my portfolio right now on Redbubble that is getting about four sales a day. And it's not getting the cheap sales either. It's getting the good stuff like the duffel bags, the canvases, things like that. It's a good design. People genuinely want it which is kind of what brings me to my next topic is you have to have a genuine desire. If you as the seller wouldn't pay for that design, then it's probably not a good idea to design that. Okay. That's just a little, a little barometer I use. And I'll give you an example here. Okay. For me, if I was to go on a t-shirt and I see this design over this design, I'm more likely to buy this one. I just think it's more creative. I think it's more colorful. More importantly, I think it stands out more. I'll give you another example. This wolf here. Okay. Would you rather go with this all black wolf on a t-shirt or this wolf? I personally would go with the one that's that's more attractive. More, it just stands out to me more, right? And here, I actually used an example. I created a few different uh, examples here. Let me go ahead and uh, let's just say, let's delete these two images here. I created one t-shirt design and I created like, tw- like I don't even know. I was going to say 20, but probably less than 20, maybe like 10 uh, different variations of the single piece of text that I added here. So here's a piece of text that says Sigma grind set, and I can create all these different variations for one design. You can see here, this one has a gradient. And by the way, guys, these are images. You can't do this on Canva, um, or you can, but it's not gonna come out the same way. Um, But you guys could see here, I created all these different designs just off one piece of text. And I'm gonna use different tags, right? because we talked about the niche research, the tag research, etc. I'm going to use different tags for each of these designs, and they're all going to be separate designs. You guys can see here, once again, more designs. So what I'm doing is I'm, first of all, expanding my horizons, diversifying my portfolio, and more importantly, getting these designs that might look attractive because beauty is subjective. One person might think this design is really nice. Somebody else might really want this one or this one, right? And if I just, uh, maybe I could make these designs pop a little more if I just show you guys this with a black background. You could see here, it's completely different now. It looks different on different products. And if you guys are interested in learning how to create uh, these these colored backgrounds behind the photo, whether it's for this paw, for the text, or even for an image like this, I encourage you to go get my mini course here on autopilot uh, passiveincome.com. Go to products, click on this blend designs mini course. It's $9.99. Go ahead and grab it if you're interested. I'll leave the link in the description box down below. You could actually do designs like this on your iPad. You could do it on your phone. You could do it on your Android device, on your Mac, your PC, your Chromebook. Basically, anything that gets internet, you could do this on. It's super easy. It literally takes 10 seconds. We've had a bunch of people sign up for the mini course already. I haven't had any complaints and everybody loves it and it gets the job done and it makes it super, super easy. And on top of that, you don't use Photoshop. Photoshop is expensive to do this. Um, I know you could do this on Photoshop, but Photoshop is definitely, I think it's like 40 bucks or something like that. I could be wrong, but I, I don't, I personally don't use Photoshop and that's just a testament to prove, um, that you don't need Photoshop. And on top of that, I'm not an advanced designer like other people are, uh, with Photoshop. So 
I don't use Photoshop, and this tutorial, this mini course, doesn't include anything about Photoshop. It's my own custom method that I use, and uh, it works great for me. And like I said, I showed in the mini course, all right? So if you want the mini course, I'll leave the link in the description to that as well, all right? Let's go over to the next topic, okay? Social media marketing. So I've talked about this on the YouTube channel. I've mentioned this. I've actually shown how to do this, but and I've mentioned also free ways and paid ways to do this, guys. Uh, but another one of those aspects out of the eight, right? 12.5% could make you 12.5% better. And uh, it's part of the 100%. It's a part of the aspect. Can't get 100% better if you miss this out, okay? Social media marketing. It's going to give you that edge to your designs. You can potentially increase the amount of money you're making on Redbubble with social media. There's a reason why I say potentially here, guys, is because there's no guarantee to getting sales. There's no guarantee for somebody to look at your design and say, you know what, I'm going to buy that. All you could do is you can gain more traffic, more attention, more favorites, more likes, more, more uh, followers, more whatever. But you can't force anybody to buy. I think we can all agree on that. But social media allows you to improve that number dramatically. In fact, I've created multiple videos showing proof of my sales, showing proof how social media changed my sales, and showing proof of the dashboard analytics behind the sales. So a good example of this, I made a video, I believe yesterday, where I talked about free ways to promote your, um, your uh, whatever you call it, your Redbubble store. And some of those freeze ways included Instagram, Pinterest. Now, for me personally, I've spoken about this also, is that with Instagram and Pinterest, you can sit there and do it completely for free all day, but your results are not going to be amplified. They're going to be, well, average results. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to get a, a hundred f followers overnight. But you can actually change that depending on your niche, depending on the photos you're posting with what I call an Instagram bot. Well, I don't call it that, but other you know people use it and it, they're well known as Instagram bots. One of the companies that I've been using way before even I was an affiliate is called IGBots.org. This is the tool that I've been talking about. If you want to check my uh, YouTube channel, I've made significant amount of videos on this. Uh, way before I even was talking about Redbubble, I was talking about Instagram bots, and it wasn't just this bot. It was other bots. Um, in fact, this is a newer bot. It's kind of newer on the scene, but I was using these bots up here, which are actually discounted. Um, but this tool, you can go out there and you can like people's posts, you can follow people um, from a like list or a follow list, and I, I, like I said, I've done tutorials, you can unfollow people, and basically what a tool like this does, guys, it just gains you more attention, because when you're, and you gotta think about this, guys, if you have a clothing brand, let's say like, if, if you guys are familiar, Alphaly Athletics, right, the owner of the company, Christian Guzman, what does he do? He sponsors people. He sends people free product. What do they do? They take pictures of the product and they put it on Instagram. Well, Instagram is getting attention. They're getting attention through these the Instagram, right? These influencers that he's essentially sponsoring, that he's hiring, okay? And they're taking pictures with the products. And guess what? Their family, their friends, their millions of followers that follow them see the product, and then they go buy it. Well, not all of them, of course, but a good percentage buy it. And that would increase the sales. So I essentially do the same thing, but guess what? I'm not the owner of Alfleet. I don't have millions of dollars to spend on influencers. Instead, I could go here to the bot, pay $119, and now I can interact with people every single day, and essentially I'm buying their attention for free because I'm using the bot to do so. And you guys can see here, this is an example of the bot right here. You literally go on Instagram, you have your settings, you have your follow, your like, your minimum delay, etc. Like I said, if you guys don't know what this is, I recommend you go watch my other videos. I'll leave a few links in the description box down below if you're interested for any of the Instagram bots to see them. They're free videos, they're on YouTube, and I just kind of show the results and how I use them, okay? Let's go ahead and move on to the next part. And once again, I don't know if I clarified this, but email, uh, the social media marketing guys, you do it for free, you'll get results, but they'll just take longer, okay? That's it. There's no, there's no magic to this. The bot does what a human can't do logically is I can't sit there on the computer and just hit like all day. I'll run myself insane. I'll lose my mind. So that's essentially what the bot does. Okay. Now let's talk about email marketing. Email marketing is something I haven't actually spoken on too much, but it's one of the aspects of the eight. And how do we do email marketing for Redbubble? You're, you might ask me, well, there's no way to email people through Redbubble. Uh, and I'm not even talking about bubble mail. I'm talking about something completely different. 
And I'll explain. So you guys know this. A lot of people who are large sellers through Redbubble, through Merch by Amazon, they are completely aware that they do not own the platform. They don't own Merch by Amazon. They don't own Redbubble. If these companies wanted them off the platform tomorrow, they would do it in two seconds, right? The big guys. I'm talking about the owners of Redbubble, the staff behind Redbubble, the staff behind Merch by Amazon. They could terminate your account in two seconds. And guys, this is not new. You guys know this. You don't own the asset on Redbubble. A good example of this is uh, nine months ago, okay? M hundreds of people got their accounts removed off Redbubble literally for no reason. And I'm not saying, I'm not being facetious when I say that. I'm being realistic. In fact, Shimmy Morris made a video on this where he was talking about his, his account getting deleted and hundreds of other people got their account deleted. And guess what? Redbubble sent out a message on Twitter a few days later, like I think four, uh, two weeks later, 14 days later, saying, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. We'll try to start reinstating accounts back. Notice the, 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 the tone that they use. We're talking about Redbubble here. They said, oh, yeah, we'll try to get the, the, the accounts back. You got to realize, guys, that at the end of the day, we are cockroaches compared to these big conglomerate companies. These company, companies are bringing hundreds of millions of dollars in profit on a monthly basis. They're, they don't care if they delete one of our accounts. They just literally don't. And so what other people do is they create their own website and they create their own fan base on that website. So how do they do it? They do it with SEO. They do it with social media. They do it with email marketing, right? And so whenever they put out a new design on Redbubble, they send out an email to their audience and they say, hey, are you interested in this new design? Check it out. And the reality is, is if you're an artist for once type of design, you know, uh, history kind of tells itself that you're probably going to make more designs in the future that are, look similar to that. And if your customer likes that certain design, they're, they're going to like your other designs or they have the potential to like your other designs. And you're going to send them an email. Like I said, there's no guarantees. You're going to send them an email to try to improve the chance of you getting a sale on that Redbubble design. Does that make sense? And you could do this with Redbubble. You could do this with Amazon. You could do this with any kind of platform you have, even if it's your own platform. The only difference is is email marketing becomes doubly important in a situation like this because you do not own the platform. You don't own the Redbubble platform. It doesn't matter if you have 10,000 designs on there. They're all yours and you've worked so hard. If they want to erase your account in two seconds, they will. And they won't ask questions. They won't apologize. They won't say, hey, sorry for your loss. They just don't care. And that's just the way the world works. And you can't get mad at it. You just got to understand it and live with it and know how to kind of mitigate it, essentially. And guys... That's it. Oh, oh, sorry. I made a mistake. One more. Conversion rate optimization. Okay. So I actually forgot about this one, but conversion rate optimization. A lot of people are going to say it's not controllable. It is completely controllable. I'll explain. If you connect your Redbubble account to Google Analytics, right, you can see how much traffic you're getting per page that you own. When I say you own, I mean per listing that you have on Redbubble. You can see how much traffic you're getting. You can see how many people are visiting it. You can see how many people are adding to cart and you could see how many people are checking out. Okay. you see, and you're going to know how many sales you're getting per design, obviously. Right. So with Google analytics, you can say, okay, this design has a 5% conversion rate. This design has a 7%. This design has a 2%. And then you want to look at the lower conversion rate products. You want to look at the high conversion rate products. And you want to see why are these products converting higher? You want to look at your competitors. You want to look at your own design. You want to look at the way you're titling the products. You want to look at the way you're tagging the products. Are you tagging a product that's getting... Uh, you know, maybe traffic from maybe a keyword that you shouldn't be tagging and it's hurting your conversion rate. The more you optimize your conversion rates, guys, not only is it going to help you get more sales, but also you're reducing tag spamming. But most importantly, out of all the different aspects, you're creating what I call a sellable asset. Your Redbubble store is an asset. Whether it makes a dollar a month, whether it makes a hundred dollars a month or a hundred thousand a month, it's an asset. Okay, the value of that asset changes over time, depending on two aspects, depending on the um, conversion rate and depending on the ROI. In this case, 
we don't have to really worry about ROI because we're not spending any money to get these designs created, at least for most people. I mean, if you want to hire a team, go ahead and do so. Um, but in most cases, we're not really spending that much money. Maybe we have a Canva subscription. Maybe we have a Photoshop subscription. I personally don't use Photoshop, but you guys know what I'm talking about here. You know, subscriptions to different softwares and things, but generally it doesn't cost much to get a business like this going. So in terms of conversion rate, it's going to be one of the only metrics that matters in affecting the chance of you selling. So for example, when I got my uh, clothing company acquired a while back, they basically, con con essentially the people who are, the agency who was selling it for me, they had to calculate, guys, how much I was making from uh, the, con you know, how much I was making in terms of profit. And they used that as was one of the multiples to figure out how much my company is going to wor be worth when it's sold. And they calculated anywhere from 30x to 90x of what it brings on a monthly basis. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? And I'm saying in terms of profit, right? And what I learned was when I brought up my conversion rates about 2% higher than what they used to be, I was able to move from a 36 per, you know, multiple to a 48 multiple, which is ridiculous because now I wasn't average anymore. I was above average. And I actually closed that business on a 7.1% conversion rate, which to me is pretty good, Okay. And I've spoken about this, uh, I think, once or twice maybe on the YouTube channel. Um, I think the other day I checked, we have over 700 videos posted on this channel. So there's a lot of content and a lot of things to watch. I don't expect everybody to know about like my past or anything like that. But, you know, conversion rates matter. And if you want to sell your Redbubble store in the future... Uh, you want to try to optimize your conversion rates and it's actually a selling point any investor that looks to buy your Redbubble store in the future is going to be like okay well what's your conversion rate what's your numbers you got to know your numbers and have you improved on your numbers how have you improved on your numbers and the fact that you can actually improve your conversion rate creates a, a, a foreseeable future for an investor which is exactly what an investor is looking for when they're looking to buy a sellable asset all right so guys, we talked a lot in this video about the eight different aspects. Each aspect is worth 12.5% for you guys to improve. Now, with that being said, all these different things, they can help you, but you got to go hard at them. You got to put in the effort. You guys know the one thing that I promote as hard as I possibly do on this YouTube channel is working hard. Sometimes you might have to put thousands and thousands of designs up to learn something or get better at something or even get 1% better. But to me, it's completely worth it because once I can get 1% better, I can get 99% better. It's just going to take some time, but now I know the formula. Now I know the way. And now you guys know the way. You guys know the formula. It's just a matter of doing it. All right? I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye.